This is a 1968 Triumph 500. This is a 1973 Honda CB500. Both are 500 cc's. This is a parallel twin. This is an inline four. And both bikes are sort of younger brothers to bigger, more iconic motorcycles. In this case, the Bonneville, and in this case, the CB750. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how this motorcycle killed this motorcycle. The 1960s was the decade for Triumph and for the British motorcycle industry as a whole. It was also basically their last decade, as the Japanese brands, led primarily by Honda, literally put them out of business. It's a bit simplistic to say that Honda's release of the CB750 in 1969 killed bikes like the Triumph Bonneville 650, but it certainly didn't help. Honda now had a motorcycle that was arguably better in every single way, besides maybe handling at a significantly lower price. But Honda didn't just go after the big bikes. They they took aim at the middleweights just a few years after the release of the CB750 with this bike, the CB504, and the bike that was caught directly in the crosshairs just happens to be another iconic Triumph, one of the most popular 500s at the time, the Triumph 500. Now you might think it's a bit unfair to compare a 1973 motorcycle with a 1968 motorcycle, but the truth is this motorcycle really hadn't changed much by 1973. The 1973 version of the Triumph 500 wasn't a whole lot different. It did have electric start, but it was fragile. It wasn't very good. So if you want, you can imagine this bike has an electric start on it. But otherwise, this bike was relatively unchanged into 1973 when we got to this bike. And this motorcycle actually came out in 1971. So these bikes really are from the same era. Let's start with the engine. The Triumph 500 is powered by the iconic 499cc parallel twin that had already been around for 30 years at this point, dating all the way back to the speed twin. This is an iconic engine. It's hard to really fully grasp just how influential this was. But that's not our mission today. For this video, we're sort of taking off the motorcycle historian hat and putting on the motorcycle riding hat. Putting myself in the shoes of an average rider from the 1970s, looking for a middleweight bike to ride to work or, you know, rip up some B-roads. The Triumph 500 produces about 41 horsepower at 7200 RPM with an ideal power and torque curve. It's revier than you probably would think, but there's a good amount of low-end torque as well. This is an overhead valve engine, it's solid, it's reliable, but as we'll see, it's not really the engine of the future. It really is a wonderful platform, even by today's standard, a 500cc twin making 40 horsepower, you know, on this light of a bike, I mean, it's like 380 pounds wet. It's great, honestly. Sure, it has its shortcomings, namely the fact that it feels like it's going to explode at 70 miles an hour or more, but it'll do 100, hence the name T100. This was the fastest 500 that you could buy in 1968. You know, it also doesn't help that it has a four-speed gearbox the first gear will get you to like 12 miles per hour so that fourth gear is long like terrifyingly long there is a gear indicator as well well kind of it's way down by your feet which isn't the safest thing when everything is set up right this engine absolutely sings just a beautiful song in spite of the fact that it leaks oil all over the place and that's when they're set up right if it's not leaking something's wrong so let's give it a listen The Honda 500 is obviously powered by an inline four. It's single overhead cam. It produces roughly 48 horsepower at somewhere around 9,000 RPMs. It's a completely different kind of experience riding it. It's such a different engine and it's sort of a different kind of fun. Now the Triumph is a vibrating thing, but this bike absolutely purrs. It is unbelievably smooth. Most say that it's actually smoother than the bigger CB750. It truly does feel like a modern motorcycle. Well, the difference between riding the Triumph and then riding this bike is unbelievable. And it has a five speed gearbox. Needless to say, if I had to take one of these two bikes across the country, when it comes to power and feel and ease and obviously that gearbox, Again, don't get me started with the Triumph's gearbox. The Honda has a tight, solid, simple gearbox. Not as good as modern ones, but, you know, light years ahead of the Triumph. Anyways, if I'm going across the country, I'm taking the Honda all day. Oh, and the engine doesn't leak oil. Not a drop. But this bike, if you're leaking oil, something definitely is wrong. Now, let's give it a listen. <laughs> The 
The Honda also has disc brakes, as you can see, versus the Triumph, which has drum brakes. And even in 73, this Triumph 500 still had drum brakes. They were a lot better, but they were still drum brakes, or as I like to call them, slow me downs. They don't really stop you. They just kind of slow you down and they take a lot of, ooh, ow. They take a lot of effort. This uh, stops, honestly, it feels like a modern bike in terms of its braking power. If you want to start the Triumph, you'll have to do a few things, namely turn on the gas, press this little button on the carburetor, some call it a tickler, until you start seeing gas run out all over the place, pull in the clutch and kick the engine over a few times till it turns freely, then let out the clutch, turn the ignition on, and give it a kick. Now the Honda, is a little bit easier. Okay, that's a bit unfair. You do have to turn the gas on as well, pull the choke up, something my Triumph came without though, it would have had a choke stock, turn the key and the switch and then press the button or kickstart. Oh, that brings me to the Kickstarter. The Honda Kickstarter pivots in such a way that the entire mechanism is flush with the engine and with the bike, but the Triumph's Kickstarter pivots at the top while the main part of the Kickstarter just sort of juts out from the bike. It's a small little thing, but as you'll see with comparing these bikes, it's all the little things that have added up. From the way that the tank comes off, you know, with the Honda, it slides off nicely off these rubber mounts, while the Triumph tank is just bolted to the frame, to the key locked seat on the Honda versus the simple pull knob on the Triumph, and then once you lift the seat, the Honda has this nice slot for your toolkit. And if you want to get to the toolkit on the Triumph, you have to spend about 45 seconds untwisting this knob. Also underneath the Honda seat is a nice little slot for your registration and owner's manual, which I just found recently. I have the original owner's manual. Now there's loads of things I haven't even covered, like suspension, for example. I mean, the Triumph suspension is terrible compared to the Honda. Now you might be wondering if all of this is true, why do I own this Triumph? Well, because no matter how I may feel about reliability and usability, even comparing a new bike to an old one, something about this old Triumph really spoke to me. And I love it, even with all of its shortcomings. See, there's actually a lot more to motorcycling and to choosing what motorcycle you're going to own than just which one is technically better. Motorcycling is a styling exercise. Even if you're riding, you know, a sport bike that produces about 100 more horsepower than you could ever need on the road, that is a styling exercise. You're buying that bike because maybe you're flexing or because you think it's cool or because you want to show off how much you've spent or you just really like it. It's not because it's technically the best thing for whatever job you have for it. And in this case, I feel the same way about the Triumph. There was something about it that just spoke to me and called to me. And, and you know, I think it's sort of the elephant in the room when it comes to motorcycles. And that is looks, which of the motorcycles here in this case looks better. This is really the only subjective thing we're going to talk about in this video. What makes a motorcycle beautiful to one person may cause another to be turned off. Yeah, screw all that, I'll just say it. The Triumph is better looking. <laughs> now before you get mad at me, think about where you're coming from. I realize British bikes have the aesthetic that many modern manufacturers are going for. I know I'm a part of a system of obsession with retro bikes and with just anything retro. And that's really the thing that started it all was more retro bikes than vintage bikes for me. Everybody's trying to make a bike today that looks like this bike. But where are you coming from? My dad, for example, may find the Honda better looking, and that's completely fine, but that's gotta be in part because he grew up riding and owning Hondas and other Japanese bikes. For me, the Triumph looks better in almost every single way, almost at every single angle. And I've had both bikes in my garage for a while now. Sometimes I pretend I'm taking out the garbage when really I just wanna go walk by the bikes. It's not that the Honda looks bad, it really does look great. It's a classic looking bike. The Triumph just looks that good. The sloping tank is like so perfectly designed. Even modern Triumphs fail to quite capture the look of these old bikes. It's just the ultimate roadster. If a modern company tries to make a retro motorcycle, this is the kind of bike they want to make. If they could just take this design, every single one of them would. Sadly, most of them fail to come even close to looking as good as this bike. The Honda's engine is just so much more industrial looking, you know? It's so much more, I guess, purposeful. It's not really trying to be anything it isn't. It's got, obviously, like more square edges. It's not as rounded. And it really is just made to be the best thing it can be, to produce the right amount of power, to feel a certain way. And there are certainly beautiful things, like all of these exhaust, uh, four exhausts sweeping down are, are really cool looking but it's a big hulk of a thing, you know? And it's just, it's more purposeful, I guess.
Perhaps even more subjective is the motorcycle's character. As much as I've enjoyed riding this Honda since I got it, I missed riding the Triumph for a while. It had a small electrical problem over the past few weeks that I couldn't get fixed. And big shout out to Mike from the Mighty Garage and his friend Jeff for coming over and fixing it for me. Anyways, I've been absolutely itching to ride the Triumph and now that I can, it feels great. And it's not because it's as good of a ride as the Honda, because it absolutely isn't. It just has so much soul and so much character, the way it sounds, the feedback it gives me when I ride it, it's just so good. You know, as much as we like to pretend that things like character and, you know, nostalgia and looks and beauty are most important, the truth is that Innovation is what always wins, and that's the reason why this motorcycle killed this motorcycle. No matter how much this bike may speak to a certain person, this bike was just better in almost every way. The Triumph sure is lighter, it does feel a little bit more nimble, but other than that, this motorcycle is pretty much better in every single way. And it's funny, I was actually talking to my son the other day, who's four, and I asked him, you know, would you rather have this bike or this bike? If you could only have one, which one would you want to have? And, you know, he's named, I think, both of these motorcycles. This one is named Ivy, and this one is named Blueberry. I know the colors don't totally make sense, but whatever, that's what he named them. Anyways, he had a great answer, which I think sort of applies to all of this. And he basically said that he would do a fancy little trick. If he had to choose one bike, he would do a fancy trick where he put one leg on this bike and one leg on that bike, and he would ride both of them. And that would be his way to basically keep both of them. His answer was... You know, he, he doesn't want to just have one, he wants to have both. And as much as this bike may be better, today, looking back at these motorcycles, that was kind of my answer. I think, yeah, I think I'll just have both of them.